We are here with Mr. Daryl Mallett at Old Arizona on the White Stallion Ranch. Daryl is the founder and producer of the Arizona Film Expo. He's going to tell us a little bit about that and the film industry in Arizona and what we can expect with Senate Bill 1708. Daryl Mallett. Hey, thanks for having me. This is a gorgeous site, and a beautiful location. So, so the Film Expo, we started in 2018, uh, a bunch of us here in Tucson and uh, Phoenix and other places. And uh, it was basically designed to be kind of like the American film market event for Arizona because, you know, we, we lost our tax incentives in 2010. Everybody went everywhere else. And so we were kind of trying to figure out how to have critical mass uh, where actors, producers, directors could get together and network mm -hmm. because we're all we're all working towards. And the you're same all still goal. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we, you know, a lot of us can't just pick up and go wherever the work is because we have family here and obligations here. Mm -hmm. So, so we wanted to kind of have a way where we could network because we're all, we're all working towards the same goal, but most of us have our noses to the grindstone, and so mm -hmm. we're not looking around to see what everybody else is doing. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a place for networking, a place where we could sell our films to distributors and just kind of have a business expo to kind of show the legislators that this is actually an industry that we're actually trying to you know make a living on it mm -hmm. and put our kids through school on on uh, film paychecks so so it's it's uh, really good this we had our first one in 2019 um, the town of Miranda which is right close to here was one of our major sponsors and we had Gary Clark from mm -hmm. the Virginian who lived here for 30 years and filmed at Old Tucson mm -hmm. and Barbara Eden who was born here mm -hmm. uh, as two of our special guests and inducted them into the Film Hall of Fame mm -hmm. for Arizona. And then this year, of course, last two years nothing happened due to COVID. And then this year we're going to be starting up again in October and the inductees are going to be uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, Linda Carter, who both are U of A. Uh, alumni, mm -hmm. Linda was born in Phoenix, and then Dick Van Dyke, who's a longtime resident of Scottsdale, mm -hmm. um, the Harkins family, mm -hmm. and then one of the early, very early uh, film companies here, Eclair, mm -hmm. that's shot here in 1912 and 1916. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun. We've tracked down the descendants of some of those founders. They're planning to come out to accept their awards. And oh, that's fantastic. It's just really nice to be able to recognize people. And then we're going to have the first Bob Shelton. A memorial Award for Service to the Industry in Arizona mm -hmm. for Harry Findes and Charlie LeSueur. Outstanding, so, yeah. yes. Now, New Mexico has had quite a run, and tell us a little bit about how they were able to essentially poach all the production that came from Arizona, and it was because the film tax credits, had a, they let them expire, and, and they weren't they weren't renewed in the state of Arizona, correct? That was a big part of it. Uh, you know, New Mexico already had Santa Fe Studios and Albuquerque Studios that were doing, you know, their own business. When we got rid of tax incentives in 2010, obviously they were looking for someplace that looks like this. And oddly enough, Southern California and parts of New Mexico look just like this. Mm -hmm. And so they went where the, the incentives were. Netflix came in, bought Albuquerque Studios. They've pledged over a billion dollars over the next 20 years of, of infrastructure building, of projects. And right now, there just isn't enough studio space on the planet. Uh, a lot of studios during the real estate boom, they sold the properties off because they weren't really money makers, especially during COVID. There was a lot of, a lot of downturn there. Mm -hmm. And so now with, and then the, the, the downside of that is during COVID, De demand for content went up because everybody was staying home. Mm -hmm. So now you'll not only have regular traditional films and movie theaters, but now you've got streaming platforms, cable, uh, Roku, Hulu. I mean, there's just so many, and everybody has their own network that you have to pay for. So mm -hmm. it's getting kind of ridiculous the landscape. It's great for filmmakers because there's more options, mm -hmm. but there's not enough places to, to film. And so Albuquerque Studios, according to a friend of mine that works there, they're booked solid for the next five or six years. Wow. So you can't even get in there to, to do a project mm -hmm. in, until, you know, next decade. So the timing for 1708 in the state of Arizona probably could not be better. Oh, this is the perfect time to do it because, uh, as you know, you know, Disney moved all of uh, almost everything except the park uh, from California to Florida. Mm -hmm. um, they're just, there's the people there are just tired of the, the smog, the, the overcrowding, the bad business that's mm -hmm. happening. Um, a friend of mine at Disney told me that when during COVID they were all, of course all shut down, the Southern California Attractions Alliance put forward uh, a proposal of how they were going to operate during COVID. The governor said no. D 
Disney said, we've been doing crowd control for over 75 years. We know how to do this and we're going to open anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, they would have been fine for that. And my friend said, even if it was a million dollars a day, we would still m make more money paying the fine every day and being open. Mm -hmm. And so they were getting set to open. They were helping out the smaller attractions. So, so the big ones like Disneyland, Magic Mountain, Universal Studios, they were helping out uh, the... Uh, the pirate dinner theater and you know smaller parks just mm -hmm. to keep the their you know competitors but but friends mm -hmm. uh, and colleagues going, and then the city of Anaheim decided that they wanted all of the back sales tax and property tax that they'd been exempt from for 70 years. Disney said no, thank you. Wow. And then of course they didn't even have to fight for themselves because all the businesses that surround Disneyland are like, are you mad? Mm -hmm. So. There's just been a lot of bad business decisions because of COVID, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, and so New Mexico definitely benefited from us. My office is on I-10 at Cortero, and I see the trucks going to New Mexico. We're the drive-through flyover state. Mm -hmm. That's basically what they call us. And when we brought the head of Netflix, Albuquerque, out here, she was amazed. Mm -hmm. She said, there's so much. We brought her out here to White Stein Ranch. We took her to uh, Old Tucson Studios. We took mm -hmm. her to the Grand Canyon. I mean, we just showed her everything. She was amazed because people, all her career had told her, don't, don't go to Arizona. Right. So definitely the other states have benefited. And I think really, John, what people need to understand is this is not a political issue. This is an economic issue. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter what your politics are. It doesn't matter what country you came from, what color your skin is, who you pray to, who you sleep with. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what, any of that. We have stories that need to be told. We've got good people that want to tell them, and we just need to be focused on that mm -hmm. and what we have in common mm -hmm. to tell, tell those stories. I understand, too, that the film industry, to a certain degree, is, and it's not recession-proof. I don't know that there is anything that is, but during down times, people, the consumer, still want to be able to escape, yes. escapism. Yes. So the content, the production, and, and uh, it keeps going. Right. And uh, I don't know that that is realized either. I don't think it is. And, and you kind of touched on something that, that my, my uh, father says all the time. He says, thousands of channels, nothing to watch. And I think that's not true because all stories are worth watching. You may not, you know, want to watch a, a basketball game or whatever, but that's still a story, right? That's still entertainment. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, whether it's sports, whether it's drama, whether it's comedy, whether it's a documentary, those are all stories that are, are needing to be told. Um, going back to your earlier point, one of the things uh, about realizing that, you know, my, my phrase is, let's get out of the P of politics and into the C of, of commerce, right? Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, and that's not mine. Uh, Rebecca Kosowski at the Miranda Chamber of Commerce kind of came up with that one. Uh, uh, I helped a little bit. but um, <laughs> And so what people don't understand is that New Mexico pulled down something like $750 million last year while we were still coming out of COVID. Atlanta, I'm going to say Atlanta, Georgia, pulled down a record $4.2 billion out of a worldwide industry that's hundred billion dollars mm -hmm. and so it's really an economic math problem and I think Arizona residents need to realize that's mm -hmm. money that's not coming into our state coffers that's mm -hmm. money that's not going towards improving roads mm -hmm. or or infrastructure or mm -hmm. building bridges so or into our schools and so I think that once people it, it, you know the general populace understands that that we're robbing ourselves because of a few lawmakers that have some sort of gut check reaction, don't understand it, whatever, and are voting mm -hmm. against it, that we're losing out on potentially seven hundred fifty mm -hmm. million to four point two billion dollars. Yep. So tell us what your recollection is of the film industry back when tax credits, the film tax credits, were available or incentives were available. What year they expired? Why they expired? And then this massive gap of time that you guys have all been able to keep it together somehow. And here we are on the cusp of, of Senate Bill 1708. You guys are all working so hard on that. But you give us a rundown on all that. Well, I've, you've probably spoken to other people like Marty Fries and gotten the history. We, we were Hollywood's backlog for 75 years. Mm -hmm. you know, eight hour drive from, from LA. So there wasn't a problem. Once tax incentives started being a thing around the country, then the playing field didn't wasn't even anymore. So we got on board with it, I want to say around 2004, 2005. And we had the tax incentives for uh, up until 2010. Uh, Governor Hull uh, got rid of them in 2010. I don't know the reasons for that. Um, you know, one, one uh, apocryphal story is that she said, well, we have, if they want to come, they're going to come because we have things that nobody else has. Yep. And one of the reporters asked, like what? 
she says, well, the Grand Canyon, of yep. course, the reporter being yep. being a smart, smart aleck, he says, well, you know, Colorado has the Grand Canyon too, they just look at it backwards. So, uh, <laughs> so the reasons, uh, the reasons are unknown. I think because we're a very conservative state, regardless of what party you're in, that there was a lot of push against um, what, what appeared to be giveaways. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the battle that we're fighting right now. A lot it's the of misunderstanding it, it of it. It is a misunderstanding. And, and a lot of the legislators that voted against it so far have have said that expression where, where we don't want to give away the farm. Mm -hmm. What they don't understand is that it's a rebate, not a handout. And, and that's where I think we're going to run into uh, the problem is if they don't understand it, if they haven't done their research or, or they just don't care, um, they're not going to understand. It's like buying a refrigerator, right? If you spend $2,000, you send your card in, you get 200 bucks back. If you don't buy the refrigerator, you don't get any money back. Mm -hmm. So we're not handing out cash. Mm -hmm. I, I think from what I can see, and I'm, I'm not any expert on how tax uh, credits work and so on, but the assembled team of people that have come together to make this happen, uh, Nick Simonetti, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Bill Ryder, mm -hmm. um, uh, Mr. Gowan, who sponsored it mm -hmm. from Sierra Vista. Uh, everybody is so is supportive of, of all of that. And, and they're sort of the tip of the iceberg, and there's just an army of people that, that are working on this. Uh, what, what kind of uh, other types of media has been put forth to educate the public on, on the benefits of this? Has, has, has there, is there some places that people may be able to go and look at online to sure. get deeper look at it? Yeah, so Randy Murray and, and the Arizona uh, Film and Digital Media Coalition, uh, I believe it's uh, AZ, azdmc.com, I might be wrong, uh, they have all the information on it. Randy's been fighting for this for, for decades, just like me and the guys at Caribou have. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this isn't something that just happened a few months no, ago. No. You guys have been working on this for years. Yeah, Randy's really been the point of the spear for, for decades, honestly. And, uh, uh, and so this bill came about because a bunch of people wrote to, uh, to Nick Simonetta, to David Gowan, Senator Gowan, about the inability to make a living mm -hmm. here in Arizona. We can't, I can't leave. I have five kids scattered across three states. The two youngest live here. I have to stay here. Right. So I can't just pick up and go wherever the work is. Right. Um, a lot of the, the infrastructure here, you know, that's been one of the arguments as well is that we don't have any infrastructure here. We do have the infrastructure here. They're all just working somewhere else right now. Mm -hmm. We have literally thousands of people involved in the film industry that, that call Arizona home mm -hmm. that would love to come home mm -hmm. and do it here, mm -hmm. but they can't because the jobs are somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that, that the bill, the timing is perfect. Senator Gowan's backing it is beautiful. It's a bipartisan bill. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's heavily Republican uh, in the in, sponsored in the onset, but the Republicans are the ones voting against it, which mm -hmm. is very strange. Mm -hmm. uh, I you know I thought we were free market. I mm -hmm. thought we were capitalists. I thought you know you want to encourage businesses to come here, and I think that's where they lose sight of it is that if they understood the sheer dollar amount that. Georgia's bringing down that, mm -hmm. that New Mexico's bringing down that Vancouver, just a city is bringing down that that might influence them a little bit when they when they hear from Castle Rock Entertainment that they spent two point two billion dollars last year, hired one hundred ninety million people, all the names that Marvel's trained us to sit through well, and watch, mm -hmm. you know, and of course, if you're in the film industry, you sit and watch because you want to see your name or your friend's names. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that benefit from them, and they're all locals. They don't want to drag 90% of their crew in from Hollywood to right. somewhere else. Sure. Yeah. And where are we at now with uh, 1708 right now in the process? Where, where, where are you guys at with it? Um, so SB 1708 is in the House of Representatives right now. It's already passed the uh, House Appropriations Committee by a vote that was very, very close, too close for comfort. It was eight to five with one abstention. And then they've suggested the amendments like we talked about, about having an audit, a regular audit uh, oversight to have a sunset clause. How do we shut it down if it, it's not working? Um, limited access to the money, that sort of thing. Um, exclusions on X-rated uh, productions mm -hmm. benefiting from it and such. And so I, they're, they're fixing the amendments and then it goes to the rules committee where they make sure all the legalese is right and the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Uh, and then it goes to a full House of Representatives vote. So we're anticipating that that's gonna happen before the end of this month. Mm -hmm. And of course with the Pima County signing 
uh, a new lease agreement with American Heritage Railways for Old Tucson Studios. Yeah, I want Studios. you to talk about that too. Yep, Mescal it was purchased by the Karchner family and it's getting a facelift and some new life. So mm -hmm. there's a lot going on in the film industry in Arizona right now and it's all dovetailing and the bill is perfect right now. I mean, it, it's like the stars are aligning, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I call it prayer, but mm -hmm. it could just be yes. stars aligning. Yeah, so I think that there's a lot of good things coming. All of the film companies said, we want to come back. We do mm -hmm. want to come back. You're much closer than, than anywhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the studio heads said, he said, he said to Senator Gowan, he said, we were scouting in Bulgaria where the uh, instructions were drive till you see the tree, hang a left, drive till you see the shepherds, and the one with the beard is the only one that speaks English. He goes, that doesn't work for me. Oh. He goes, those are not <laughs> instructions that I like. He goes, then we went to Australia. And Senator Gowan's brilliant. He says, well, keeping with the IA ending place names, how about Patagonia? And the, they all laughed. And he says, well, I don't know where Patagonia is, Senator, but if it's closer than Bulgaria, I'm interested. <laughs> so, so I think they're hungry to come back here. Mm -hmm. There's, the, the filmmakers know what's here. They mm -hmm. do. Uh, they're not stupid about their own history. Uh, they know how many films they've filmed here. They know what, what was successful here. And they want to be able to recreate it. So it's great that this set exists, that Mescal is getting a facelift, that Old Tucson, which has you know, a 50 year history or more. I mean, mm -hmm. it goes back to really to 1939 when, when uh, the first film was shot here. So, so, and then the film industry in Arizona goes back even to the 1900s, the 19 aughts, mm -hmm. uh, where they were filming, you know, Bureau of Land Management was filming things and then film production really picked up in 1912-ish, I want to mm -hmm. say. Uh, Lubin came out here from Philadelphia. Eclair came out from France. I mean, they, there was a lot of films filmed mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. uh, silent films on to today. So mm -hmm. um, I think we're looking at some exciting things. This, this bill really is a lifesaver for our industry, for those of us that are trying to trying to do that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that they, they, they bring up that's in conjunction with that is that they point to states like New Mexico and others that ran into financial trouble. The reason New Mexico ran into trouble was because somebody who shouldn't have used that money used that money. Somebody in the government took that money that was supposed to be earmarked to go back to Hollywood and used it for something else. So I then see. they had a then they had no money. Mm -hmm. so That's where the auditing, the exactly. real effective exactly. auditing, yeah. And yeah, and in fact, on the front the, end too, before on they the front even started. End, absolutely, yeah. and 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 consistent auditing and oversight, mm -hmm. and very limited access to that pool of money. Mm -hmm. right? So that and one of the House of Representatives members did bring that up mm -hmm. that we need to have. Uh, the audits. So, uh, you know, if we do it right, there shouldn't be a problem like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the major issues that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other argument that we get is that they say it's low paying, non sustainable jobs. Now, that's totally not true. The president of Castle Rock Entertainment came and spoke to the Senate uh, Appropriations Committee, and he pointed out that our industry pays 90% higher wages than than regular industry. So our carpenters make 90 or more percent more than a carpenter that's framing a house. Mm -hmm. The job itself may not be long term because you're working on a project by project basis, but the career is sustainable. Right. And that's where they don't understand. I it. think there's a misconception there too that they see this as technically it's part-time, but it's multiple part-time jobs throughout the year. Correct. They're working very steadily, but it's not where you sign up and you're there all year long. You're, right. you're bouncing around. Yeah. And being able to have those productions constantly coming in on a conveyor belt is, is I'm sure, the, the, the goal of you guys. Yes, and having the bill basically opens the door again. It puts our shingle out and says, hey, we're still here. We, you know, will you come play with us? Uh, an interesting comment that one of the, one of the studio heads made during it, he said, you in Arizona think that we turned our backs on you, but you shut the door on us. Mm -hmm. And we went somewhere else where, because we got uh, you know, an incentive. And it's not a handout. We do it for aerospace, we do it for, for semiconductors, we do it for biotech, and yet for some reason there's a resistance to uh, the acting and, and film and television world. And I think that's because they don't see us as an industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it expected to be a lot of union participation? Uh, Arizona is uh, traditionally anti-union, of course, and we're a right-to-work state. But most of the people that are here trying to make a living in the film, or actually are managing to make a living in the film industry, we we usually pay union do uh, union standard pay. We have union safety rules, mm -hmm. so the the level of production and the pay is usually to that level even if we don't have actual union mm -hmm. uh, participation. All of our actors that are SAG of course have to follow the union rules no mm -hmm. matter what where they shoot. Mm -hmm. We do have SAG after here, we have IATSE which is for crew, 
and so there there is that level of participation and, and really it's for it's for safety and for looking out for the crew and, mm -hmm. and, and cast right and they did is it some kind of a retirement program a 401 or something like that when you're participating in the union in that I don't know because I'm not part of the union so I you would have to ask somebody who who actually is I uh, I was SAG after a hundred years ago when mm -hmm. I lived in LA and, and uh, here in Arizona I haven't really needed to do it so um, I, I hope to renew my membership, and I'll tell you the answer of that. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> okay. Now, but Senate, Senate Bill 1708 is a tax or a film tax credit, and the benefit to the production company is that then they get a rebate from the state from whatever they spend on. Uh, uh, labor and other things that are in the state. So if you could explain that better sure. than I can try to sure. ask the question. Yeah, that's close. So so it, what this bill does is it basically gives the incentive to anybody who works on film in Arizona. Originally, I believe the bill was written to be uh, oriented towards production facilities, uh, 10,000 square foot minimum. We don't have one of those in Arizona. Sneaky Big is, I think, six to 8,000 feet. The one at Old Tucson is 6,000 square feet. So we don't actually have that facility here. Um, there is a group that's trying to build a studio complex out in Buckeye, which makes sense because it's on the far west side of, right. of Phoenix. Um, and then, of course, it was opened up to any filming in Arizona. But but it, but it's not a percentage of the budget of the movie. It's a percentage of the taxes collected on the money spent in Arizona. Okay. So so again, the legislators that are looking at this. Oh my goodness, we're going to hand out. 150,000 know, million dollars this year and it's what's going to be next year of course we want it to go up as as more businesses mm -hmm, come mm -hmm. uh, that means we're doing well but it's it's so if you have a hundred million dollar budget and it's a 25 percent credit you're not getting 25 million back you're getting 25 percent of the taxes which i think is i don't even know eight percent here when did it when did the effort start uh when uh, nick began writing the bill uh when, how long has he been working on that so this has been uh, multiple months right okay. i can't say exactly how many um i'm going to say that he was probably approached i want to say almost six eight months ago mm -hmm. uh, when the process started uh, of course, it, it got looked at by other people, Matthew Earl Jones, our state film commissioner, Randy Murray, uh, who's been in charge of that. Um, there's just been a ton of people that have given their input. HBO, the guys from HBO took a look at it because they're here filming Duster right now. Um, that's another thing. They, they want to be able to commit to filming here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tax incentives, of course, are going to be super helpful for that. So they do as little here as they can just to they get back as, to wherever they They do can. as little here as they can, and I'm, I can't speak specifically for HBO, but but... You know, break. We were set to have Breaking Bad in Apache Junction when the tax credits went away, and oh, then they gee. went away. They oh, went next door yeah. to New Mexico. I don't think. I think that is another misconception that just because you've got pretty scenery, which the Arizona does have, it's very unique. Saguaros. It's the old West. There's no doubt about it. But that is not enough to lure the production companies here. No. They can go anywhere they want. They go where the tax incentives are. If you don't have tax incentives, they're not coming. Right. Well, they're, they're a business just like everything else. People think that Hollywood is like NASA, right? Whereas toilet costs $4,000. But that's because we do pay higher wages to people. We do pay union dues for people. We do have retirement programs, I'm sure, for people. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're willing to spend money, but they're like any, any household. They're trying to stretch their dollar and get as much out of it as they can. Mm -hmm. They're a business. That's mm -hmm. their, their goal is to make money. Mm -hmm. We think it's to entertain us, but it's really to make money, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so th that's really what the focus is on is that, is that when they come here and get nothing or go to New Mexico and get something, it, mm -hmm. it doesn't even matter what the something is as long as we're offering it. Mm -hmm. And that's really the kind of the lesson that I took away from the big meeting that we had uh, as the bill was going through uh, with the studios is that that something just offer anything. Yeah, got to get in the game. Exactly. And a lot of places, you know, have done local level incentives like Matthew Earl Jones has the uh, has gotten state parks and recreation to offer free filming. Uh, AZ Dot has offered free filming on, on highways. Um, City of Tucson offers some incentives, like if you film in Tucson, they'll give you uh, office space, they'll give you storage space. Mm -hmm. Monsoon Productions offers 30 day, 30% 30 cashback rebate. Southern Arizona Video Productions offers a uh, rebate. So, so there's a lot of local incentives where people like us are just trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. And filming has been going on here all throughout, but it's mostly small independent films. Um, Nomad Land, which was filmed in Quartzsite, just uh, won, a, won an Oscar award, I think. Um, and so 
there's stuff still happening here. Mm -hmm. It's just not enough to sustain the full industry of people mm -hmm. that, that call this home. Right, the incentives aren't, aren't enough to bring the big guys in. Right, right. So we're trying to do, you know, grass level, uh, you know, incentives and the town of Nogales, the city of Nogales is offering some things. So it, there are, there are mayors that understand it, but not enough. There mm -hmm. are town managers that understand it, but not enough. Mm -hmm. There are only, uh, I want to say four uh, AFCI certified film commissioners uh, in Arizona. Mm -hmm. There's no structure. Matthew is our state film commissioner. He works for the Arizona Commerce Authority. Mm -hmm. He's appointed by the governor, mm -hmm. so we may lose him when the new governor steps up. Mm -hmm. Others work for the city, mm -hmm. uh, like Marana. Mm -hmm. Others work for non-government organizations, like Peter at, at Visit Tucson. So there's no real structure where we all kind of work together mm -hmm. officially, right. but there's we all communicate with each mm -hmm. other. And so, you know, when Senator Gowan and Nick Simonetta and, and Peter Catalanotti really started this project, they absolutely let everybody that needed to know know so we could all kind of take a look at it and, and give our input. We're working with Pima County, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, Pima Community College mm -hmm. uh, with U of A and there's a lot of things. Um, Matthew started uh, an education program with several uh, universities and community colleges to mm -hmm. start being able to train crew people, mm -hmm. which is something, you know, workforce development, right? That's mm -hmm. very important. Rural development, very important. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the, the cities uh, surrounding Phoenix, you know, Phoenix and Tucson, they're the big giants. They're they're kind of all right, business as usual. Just keep the keep the train rolling. Mm -hmm. But the smaller cities, uh, all throughout, uh, trying to get the Arizona Film Expo started, they're hungry for it. Mm -hmm. Quartzite is hungry for it. And a perfect example of this is um, Quentin Tarantino was filming in Colorado recently. Mm. Uh, he stopped in at a local tire dealer and bought a quarter million dollars worth of snow tires for Gee. his for his fleet because they couldn't get mm -hmm. up to the, the location they wow. were filming at. Mm -hmm. So here's a quarter million dollar windfall mm -hmm. to a business that doesn't normally think it's part of the film industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he says his business has gone up 25% since Tarantino because of film tourism, right? right? People go, oh, Quentin Tarantino bought his tires there, I'm gonna go check it out. Right. And so there's that added element. Then you add the 750 million or 4.2 billion direct spending. Mm -hmm. And then the multiplier, because people like you and me live here, we're gonna take that money that we got from that project and spend it here. Sure. So the multiplier can be anywhere from, you know, three to eight, eight and a half percent. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the senators in Utah, he said, he said $8.62 for every dollar that is spent there. So it's really sustainable. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Now you have quite an extensive background in the film industry, obviously, but how did you get involved in and when did that happen and where did it happen? So, you know, I was always the kid who wanted to be in every play at school and, and some really bad ones. I actually found the script for a play that I wrote when I was in sixth grade. It's absolutely horrible. Um, so I was always kind of the acting bug, you know, so close to Hollywood. Uh, when I got into college, I actually studied theater. I, I got to work at Paramount Pictures. I got very fortunate at 17 to have A.C. Lyles, the great producer, uh, become one of my mentors. Um, A.C. has the, had the longest career and the shortest resume in Hollywood. It was Paramount Pictures his whole life. Wow. Started at 17 when passing out handbills on the sidewalk at a Paramount Theater. Right. And ended up as an executive producer uh, emeritus, essentially, out at Paramount. So Gee. he had one job his whole life from Paramount. Mm -hmm. Great guy, worked on all of the famous movies, Hondo, you know, so he's another guy that came out here and did some stuff mm -hmm. with, with those. And so um, did Star Trek The Next Generation as an extra, got to write a script for them mm -hmm. that they purchased. Uh, Star Trek VI, The Torkelsons, National Treasure Two. So I've had a lot of fun bouncing in and out of the studios, seeing how it really works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and everybody's got that glamour. They called it silver screen for for actual reasons because it was silver nitrate right. film. But the, the color silver, the metal silver. I mean, it's just glittery and mm -hmm. exciting. And and you know, back in the day. Hollywood was glamorous. Mm -hmm. And so everybody wants to be part of that. You see that NBC logo pop up. You see that Paramount logo, the, the Columbia mm -hmm. uh, statue. It just really touches something, I think, primal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like you just respond to yeah. it on a primal level. Well, they talk about Hollywood magic, and it, you know, we're, we're here with an entire crew yep. uh, for this, and uh, on a large production, I can't imagine how many people there are. There's gotta be hundreds of people oh, yeah. that are 
yeah, yeah. involved in it. Well, and it, one of the great things is, like uh, I heard Marty say earlier, you know, here's the spot that we marked 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to shoot Star Trek Six parts of it in the same canyon that the Bat Cave was in for the TV series oh, with Boy. Adam West. So mm -hmm. it was just kind of that history there, the kind of the excitement, the rubbing shoulders with with somebody, the ghosts of those who came before you. Right, so, right. You know, and then you see weird things like just the other day, Dean Stockwell was in a movie with Errol Flynn. What? I'm sorry, Errol Flynn's like way back in history. Dean Stockwell just passed away recently, but he was like 10 years old and, oh. he was, and, and he's sitting on a horse with oh. Errol Flynn. I mean, wow. talk about being able to touch history, mm -hmm. right? Ava Marie Saint is still alive, 97, going strong. Barbara Eden, 90. Gary Clark, 88. I mean, there are still tons of the golden age people mm -hmm. that are available. A lot of them filmed here. A lot mm -hmm. of them came here. So to be able to invite them back. Sure. To well, a lot of them actually, uh, Lee Marvin, he had a home here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, John Wayne had uh, purchased a ranch yep. down south around Tubac or someplace, yep. I understand. And and uh, they they uh, they come and go in and out of the state, but they, they buy real estate here yes. and it's home. They love it yes. and, uh, and stick around. And so that's the thing is that they're, they're, they're already, Hollywood is already spending money here yeah. that people don't see. You're absolutely right. And there's tons more. Uh, people like that. Oprah's got a house here. Dick Van Dyke lived in Scottsdale. Gary Clark lived in Paradise Valley. I mean, they're, they're, they are here. Stevie Nicks is here. Alice Cooper's here. I mean, there's mm -hmm. just tons of people that are here that we don't even know. They're yes. just hidden among the masses because they're not filming mm -hmm. anything here. There's nothing exciting mm -hmm. for them to participate in. Mm -hmm. Where's our Walk of Fame? Where's our Grumman's Chinese Theater? Right. Well, know? one of the Beatles had a home here, too. Yep. 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 So. For a while. So what got you to Arizona then? How did you go from transition? Oh, from well, Arizona. How did I get to Arizona? Like most of the good and bad decisions in my life, there was a girl involved. Okay. Yeah. So I came out here in uh, 93 from California, uh, you know, just trying to get a balance, work-life balance. Ended up falling in with a bunch of expatriate Hollywood guys and yeah. started making short films because right. some people like golfing and we make short films. Right. And uh, it's just been sort of a... a a really good ride since then. There's so many good people here that are, that are working on projects and I, I'm trying to bring them all together. Right. You know, I'm trying to find all the unicorns. Mm -hmm. and we're all got scurrying from bush to bush trying to not be shot at. But if we run as a herd, man, male and female have uni have horns on their face. We can run some stuff over together. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, it's great. You've yeah. got a lot of energy and you've done a tremendous amount here for for, for Tucson in the film industry, bringing it into Arizona, you had a lot to do with with old Arizona and yes. uh, the, the 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 new life that, are, that old Tucson. Has. I got. Us about that. I was very honored to be asked to serve on the Pima County Task Force for Old Tucson, um, be able to give our suggestions. Um, Scott Dyke, who's a film historian, also was on that board. We were the only two film industry people that were on there. Um, there was a lot of support from some of the other attractions here, like the Kino Sports Complex. You know, they were very supportive of Old Tucson remaining. You know, uh, there was some worry there about what what the plan was. Mm -hmm. And so um, once the task force job was done, um, I immediately contacted the, the people that had sent in their proposals, asked them how I could help all of them and uh, and have just been kind of been available to answer questions. They, all of them had lots of really good questions. What worked, what didn't, what would people like to see? Who should we talk to? Mm -hmm. You know, we've connected them with Carolyn Shelton, Bob's widow, mm -hmm. uh, about putting his uh, collection out there in a museum. Mm -hmm. they, they went out and visited Mezcal. They visited uh, Trail Dust Town. They want to work with the other the other attractions it's not really a competition when right. you're when you're all struggling together oh, no, it's right? everybody's in the same boat yeah. rolling in the same direction exactly. no, it's fantastic and so so i'm really in, encouraged by this new company um the harper family they're just they're stellar mm -hmm. honest hard-working people mm -hmm. they've got great success with their other uh properties around the country mm -hmm. um just a nice group of people you know honest excited if you you can read the rfp online it's on the pima county website if they accomplish half of what's in there they're going to be wildly successful mm -hmm. so i think so too super excited yeah no i'm very excited too they are very good operators yeah. and i'm proud to have them here yeah yeah were, were you here uh during uh at the time when old tucson burned down and i think it was 94 yeah i was up in, i was up in phoenix and i had already i'd already known uh, mr shelton for a long time and mr mm -hmm. diamond and kind of just watch that whole thing. I mean, you know, as a filmmaker, we were always interested in what's happening with, you know, properties sure. around the state. And so I think it was a real tragedy that it happened. I'm, it's an even bigger tragedy that they didn't rebuild it from there. Right. Um, 
as you know, Don Diamond and Bob Shelton were the best of frenemies. Mm -hmm. They're both gone now. Whatever happened in the past needs to stay in the past and mm -hmm. everybody kind of needs to come to the table and work mm -hmm. together. And that's kind of what's happened here. You know, Diamond Ventures worked very closely with uh, American Heritage Railways. Mm -hmm. Again, Mescal and Trail Dust Town. So I think people are starting to see the shift that it's not about egos and personalities anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about the industry and the people in it and trying to trying to build that up. Mm -hmm. So I'm super excited about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. it can you say uh, any it, it, without breaking any kind of confidentiality, what may be occurring with the, the soundstage uh, uh, thoughts and, and, you know, in that Buckeye Richfield area, I guess, is what I've heard. But that's yeah, about it. I don't have all the details on it. I just know that there is a group there. There's also a group in Scottsdale that are that are looking to build actual studio complexes there. The one in Buckeye is is very um, ambitious. They want to build a 50 acre uh, site like an actual studio like Warner Bros, like Paramount, they, where they have multiple buildings where mm -hmm. they have multiple sound stages, office space that you mm -hmm. can that even smaller companies could rent out. Mm -hmm. So it's a very ambitious project. It's way out on the west side where it's a little quieter, it's a little darker. Closer so to LA too. Closer to LA too, yeah, exactly right. You, you save an hour not going through Phoenix traffic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can hop over to the, the Gila Bend route down to I-10 and miss all that stuff right. in between. Right. So I think that's a great location. Scottsdale's coming up. The Navajo Nation has its own film office now. Mm. You know, they're very interested in it. Um, Where I know is that at? That's up in... Uh, I want to say it's somewhere near the Scottsdale. Well, no, I'm sorry. Scottsdale's past by Yaki's. Uh, uh, I don't know where it is. Okay. I think it's on the northern end of the state, uh, right? Up in the Monument Valley. Yeah, Chin, uh, Chinle, I think, yeah. is where okay. it's at. Mm -hmm. so they're, Are they're they able to offer their own tax credits of any kind? I don't know. They, I don't know how um, nation governments work. Uh, I, I'm not sure about that. But the fact that they have created a position with a film a person dedicated to doing that is, mm -hmm. is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. A lot of the smaller cities that can't maybe afford a full-time film commissioner have a film liaison, somebody who's dedicated to helping the companies that come in, write the permits, et cetera, scout, mm -hmm. location scouting, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think people see the potential there. Um, again, $250,000 windfall to a tire shop. Right. Well, HBO, when they were here, they hired a security company. They hired right. a dry cleaning company. They hired a, a car service. So all caterers. of these yeah, caterers, yeah. yeah. Well, so, so caterers, hotels, and, uh, yeah, caterers, hotels. Yeah. Th those are we know are involved in the film yeah. industry, right? And of course, for economic development, tourism and marketing, those are the, that's what you want. You want people staying in the hotels. You want people spending their money at restaurants here. You want people seeing the sites, you know, because actors and crew they do have downtime. What are they going to do when they're mm -hmm. when they're not shooting? If they're not from here, they're going to spend money here. Mm -hmm. If you're from here, you're going to go places that you've driven past. A thousand times. I've driven past Rooster Cogburn's ostrich farm for 40 years of my life. We yeah. finally stopped and, <laughs> and, and went to it. It was fantastic. It was yeah. fantastic. My kids loved it. Right. So so that money is the money that's spent by Hollywood here gets multiplied. It gets spent in other places. So I, everybody benefits from it. Everybody is a potential part of the film industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you just, I think people need to understand mm -hmm. that. So. The event that you have, is it... Um, along the line where the, you're actually screening uh, films, uh, indies and things like that, do you? Do no, you, we're, not a film, we're not a film festival. There's, okay. there's plenty of good film festivals already here okay. in Arizona. We're a business expo. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be, <clears throat> excuse me, it's gonna be, it's networking, it's meeting with distributors, meeting with producers, meeting with directors, meeting with actors. It's a place where you can hand out your, your resume, your headshots, you can give your copies of your independent film to a distributor and they can they can uh, evaluate it on their own or they just have meetings with people that they've already been in discussions with so basically we're trying to create literally the Air american film market event for arizona and have it grow as the business grows no i think it's yeah. fantastic yeah. does phoenix have something like that or are you pretty much corralling that market for uh, that type of an event. well some of the bigger film festivals do have uh, elements of that i know chant like chandler phoenix film festival they've been around they're big they have sort of uh, things like that obviously business is getting done at, mm -hmm. at those things they're primarily a film festival to showcase movies right okay. um i know that the tucson uh music festival also is, has a small component uh, for film, I'm sorry, it's Tucson Film and Music Festival has a small component like that. But this is the first dedicated that I know of only to the business end of films. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. 
Tell us a little bit about the, we've got two universities uh, and uh, the film uh, schools and things that they have there. It's got to have a lot of dynamics. Uh, it, and then they, they get educated in a And then they go away. somewhere else. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're good at that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Both both uh, ASU and U of A have film uh, programs. The Avapai Community College has a film program, Helen Stevenson up there. Um, so there are these little pockets. Um, we do train them and they go away. The university, of course, is very, I want to say, very insular. Like, they don't traditionally come to events like this. Their students do. Their teachers do. But as, a, as an entity themselves, they really, I haven't seen a lot of support for external events. They have their own events. They have their own speakers, which are great. I try to go to them as often as possible. I encourage everybody to go, you know, get that wisdom from mm -hmm. whoever the speaker is. Um, but, again, the whole concept behind the Arizona Film Expo was to work together mm -hmm. uh, critical mass is important mm -hmm. you know it, it, it's basically herd mentality right if you straggle you get picked off if you're mm -hmm. an outlier you can get picked off mm -hmm. if you run together safety in numbers um, ability to affect change in numbers mm -hmm. and again this bill is perfect people need to write to the house their house of representatives write to all the representatives not just your own right and say this is a good idea because mm -hmm. and you know i think that's the way that we're going to get it done mm -hmm.